Good morning, happy Monday morning to you. They're three simple letters. We put them together and straight away, you know what they mean. I'm talking I, an O, and a U. You probably at some point lent me money to buy a snack and I need to pay you back. That's what it means. But can you remember the days of ledgers at the local stores, IOUs at the coffee shop, at the petrol station, the supermarket? The other day I saw someone ask for an IOU at a petrol station and let me tell you, I was a bit shook. Like it was very early in the morning, so I was probably half asleep. But I, I did not realize, I had not ever thought that I could ask for an IOU anywhere anymore. Turns out the petrol station was pretty shocked too, but it got me thinking about IOUs, about when you last used them, whether they still exist in little corners of our community. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Give me a call, 1300 33 1233. Do you still use IOUs and where, if anywhere, do you use them? You can text me 04871, but see, you'd go in there and you knew Marge behind the counter and she knew that you belonged to that family and it was all a really big trust community system and I feel like that's changed a little bit. So I'd love to hear if this still happens in your town, if there is still that little circle of trust that we have with sharing money, if that's continued in smaller communities or is it dead, gone, doesn't happen anymore. Let me know, 1300 33 1233. Do you still use IOUs and where whereabouts do you use them? We'll delve into our empty wallets next and it's past 10 o'clock on this Monday morning. Kaya Hanley with you across ABC Newcastle and New South Wales. I want to tell you about something that I saw the other morning that got me thinking. It was before 5.30 in the morning, very early. I was sort of half asleep, as you are, on the way to work. I realised I needed fuel. So I pulled into a local petrol station, filled up went inside to pay, you know the drill. And in front of me, there was a man who had filled up with fuel and then went through the process of asking for an IOU because payday was tomorrow. Now, I'm not sure what ended up happening. I know the cashier didn't look impressed, was a little bit shook that an IOU was being asked for, but it did get me thinking about IOUs because can you remember maybe when you had a ledger at the corner store, when you'd hire a video, perhaps pay on return if you didn't have the gold coins at the time for that overnight DVD? or VHS, uh, when your local cafe had an IOU system for those annoying days you forgot your wallet. So I want to hear from you. Do these IOUs still exist in the year 2021? 300 33 1233. When was the last time you used an IOU? Or perhaps you're in this retail hospitality space and you had someone come in and be like, look, I don't have it today, but let me hit you up tomorrow, I promise. Then I'll come back. Has that ever happened to you recently? one 33 at 12.33. Let's take a look at this and our relationships with debt, with money, a little closer. Steve Threadgold is a sociologist at the University of Newcastle. Good morning. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Do you remember the last time you used an IOU? Um, well, every day. <laughs> really? Um, I have a mortgage. Oh, I have yeah. a credit card. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we basically, our whole society is based on an IOU in various ways. And so that is also where I got that if we're thinking IOUs today, it would be putting something on a credit card, right? Or Definitely. asking for money from a from somewhere from a loan area, a bank or a yeah. Payday loan, yeah. Yeah, so definitely different to the scale that you're talking about at the, um, <laughs> at the garage. But still, I know that there's businesses around town here in Newcastle that um, allow their regular customers to have a ledger. You know, they might you know pay buy a coffee every day and pay off it every week and yep. and things like that. So. Things like that certainly still exist, but as our kind of societies become more complex, we know each other less and less. Um, those kind of everyday forms of exchange have dwindled in many ways, unfortunately, I would say. Yeah, is IOU very much a, a trust system? That idea of, you know, Marge who owns the corner store knowing that you were from that family yeah. and that she just, you know, shut you down because mum and dad weren't there with you? That's right. And so I think one of the things that sociologists talk about when we talk about debt and the way that societies are kind of less personal, they've been we don't know each other as much and, and some would argue that we, we lose some of the kind of enchantment of everyday life. We don't uh, know each other as much. We don't, um, I suppose, have a long-term relationship with people. And this means we have a kind of more dehumanised relationship with each other. It's kind of a transactional thing all the time rather than, you know, having this kind of, you know, my mum's generation, mm -hmm. you know, and previous generations, it goes all through that kind of thing. So um, sociologists are concerned with that kind of relationships in a way, particularly as the larger forms of debt in other ways become a way to control us, mm. I suppose, 
you know, once you have a mortgage, you're very much locked into certain things. Yeah, because this way, you know, instead of, you know, back in the day when you were able to go down to the local independent supermarket or whatever and say, oh, I don't, payday's in two days, I promise I'll come back then with my paycheck and yep. we'll sort it out. You weren't having to go into these large amounts of debts that so many of us are in now. That's right. I think that's, that's exactly, exactly right. And the other thing that's kind of, I heard on, on your previous um, session, you were talking about production as a way that we kind of, um, I suppose, um, create value and worth in society. But another way we do that is through consumption and through the display of consumption, through fashion items, through having the right car, through having the house in the right place. Mm. And so this in and of itself also is a way that um, debt becomes a part of our everyday life. So over the past couple of decades, you know, everyday consumer products in some ways have become cheaper, but you know, real wages haven't increased. There's a demand more and more to have the up-to-date stuff. And so debt becomes a kind of everyday way of dealing with this. Um, and Australia has pretty much one of the highest household debt rates in the world compared to um, average wages. Interesting, because I was thinking, oh, maybe it's the, the trust that I don't know you like I used to, and that's why that IOU system has gone. But it's interesting uh, hearing there that maybe it's because what we want is greater. And so an IOU for $2, you know, at the, the yeah. milk store is different from me going in and asking for an IOU of $1,000 because right. I want the latest iPhone. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. So definitely the scale is important. And obviously, you know, the bank's not going to um, give you a house, but, uh, but <laughs> right. on, on a more everyday level, I think um, people do IOUs all the time in their day to day life, right? You know, you go to the pub and you get in the shower. Mm. It's kind of, you know, there's the implicit trust there. We trust each other. It's kind of enjoyable as <laughs> Doesn't well. Doesn't always work well. <laughs> no, that's right. You end up having little kind of, it's your shout, whatever. Like, me and my mates do that all the time. So, it's, you know, these kind of things still happen, I think. Um, and the trust is really the important part of it. People like to get in trusting relationships mm. with each other. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the way that we relate to each other. It's 18 minutes past 10. You're with Kaya Hanley on ABC Newcastle and New South Wales Mornings. We're talking IOUs. I'm asking you the last time you used an IOU. Give me a call. one 1233 Mel's in Wall's End. Hi, Mel. Hi, Kaya. How are you going? You've got something really interesting on an IOU. Tell me about it. I did. So last January we were in New Zealand for a ukulele festival and there was a, a maker there and I was trying a few different ukuleles and I was trying the cheaper ones and then I picked up the expensive one and I tried it and I loved it but I just hadn't brought enough money. Yeah. And so I put it back and the maker said to me, oh, are you going to the Blue Mountains ukulele festival? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I'll be there. You just take it with you and you can pay me then. Oh my goodness. And this is not just like a $200 ukulele, this was a $1,000 ukulele, the most expensive musical instrument I've ever owned, and he just trusted me to take it away and, and pay him when I saw him a month later. Did you kind of think twice about it, Mel? Were you kind of like, oh, I don't I don't think I can physically, I can't, yep. and, I, and I shouldn't, and yep. that doesn't, I and don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's exactly the conversation that we had. And he said to me, look, I've been doing business this way for 20 years. I can see you really want it. You will buy it from me. I trust you. Take it. I'm, wow, dude, that is so awesome. Funny. And then the same guy, he actually gave my son a ukulele, my younger son a ukulele, like just because he said he wanted to play one as well. So Oh, there's something really be amazing. beautiful about that, isn't it? Like the sharing yeah. that comes with that and that trust because I feel like sometimes trust is the first thing that goes at the moment is that we don't have yeah. that so much so to have that even across the ditch as well um, I know and lovely. it worked out well for him because I was able to pay him in Australian dollars so then he didn't have to change any New Zealand money and pay mm. all the, the fees so it was a really a good symbiotic relationship love it and has the Blue Mountains Ukulele Festival been and gone uh, yes, that all well, couple that of was weekends last ago. February, yeah. and the new fe the, there was one in February, uh, this February as well. And how's that? Like, I saw him. Oh, you did. How's that? Yeah, how's yeah. that beautiful ukulele going, Mel? You still playing it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going to put it down now. <laughs> after how much I spent on it. Well, that's a lovely story, and exactly yeah. what we're talking about. So, thank you for sharing it this morning. No worries. You have a good day. You too. one 1233 is my phone number. You can text me as well, 0487 99 When did you last use an IOU? Steve, that was pretty special. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I think, um, you know, hopefully that person's got a Facebook page and he's done that before <laughs> and lots of people are rating it really highly, right, because it's actually also, 
you know, a really good way of kind of getting some trust in your business and but people really yeah, dig that. That sense it's of a massive risk, I suppose, in many respects, risk. particularly for a small business or and overseas um, as well. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that happens too, I suppose, that's in somewhat relation to this is you know, businesses often now have like a, a pay it forward kind of thing where mm. the IOU doesn't go to you, it goes to someone else. So and I so, might pay for two cups of coffee yeah. and the next person who comes in and yep. is Yep. you know, three dollars short or whatever, right. gets that coffee. So, you in, know, in, in some respects, you know, I, I would argue that's a really wonderful thing to happen, but it's also, again, really good business in a sense. If you want people to have goodwill towards your business, um, this is a nice way of kind of spreading that, I suppose. Mm. And it's cheap in a way. Um, and it allows people that particularly want to have some kind of human exchange through the consumption process to have it. Mm. I wonder if, like hearing Mel's ukulele story, there is community there, right? So there's a community of people who yeah. have a similar passion yeah. and he could see in her eyes that she was a good home for this beautiful instrument to go. So I wonder if maybe when we look at IOUs and money and trust and community, we've gone from having this big community where it's a whole town together to more almost these micro communities and then we're happier yeah. in that sort of trust circle rather than that bigger picture. Is that something that, no, that would be fair? I think that's definitely a good way to describe it and I think within you know various scenes and subcultures and communities and stuff like that those kind of you know non-monetary forms of exchange happen all the time and they're kind of the things that people want and that's why they get involved in them in many ways yeah um, but yeah I know giving away a thousand dollar ukulele and hoping you can get it back a month later <laughs> like I mean that's kind of a really incredible example of it in many ways yeah these days with credit cards with banking with afterpay with all these ways to have IOUs that's in a as you said a bigger corporate uh, situation. Do you think our relationship with money is is changing? Oh, definitely. So you know, um, the you know the critical theory about this is the less that we think about the money that we spend, you know, the more we're likely to spend. Mm. Um, and so the the move towards more ephemeral ways of spending money, money, you know, just you know tapping and stuff like that, you know, um, means that we kind of are less likely to keep track, I suppose, of what's going on. Um, well, you almost don't see the money go. Well, you don't. It's not really a material thing anymore. Even oh. I've, I've actually tried to kind of keep money in my wallet and keep doing as much as I can as some kind of discipline. But like, even How does now, that go for you? Well, not great. You know, <laughs> like now when you go to the pub and you want to buy a beer, people are lining up and it's actually slower not to tap, right? And you feel yep. like you're actually holding people up. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a kind of implicit pressure there to kind of not do that. So, um, yeah, again, the, the idea again here too is that, you know, critical theorists in particular are worried about the way that debt, you know, keeps us trapped in a certain way of life. Mm. Um, you know, having to, you know, what's the kind of the work work to impress people that you don't really like to buy stuff that you don't really need. <laughs> um, so there's that aspect of it. But the other thing too is the kind of the unsustainability of it. Um, the more and more stuff we buy, you know, the more mm. and more problems there are with the um, environment and waste and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting as well. Do you think that we're going back a little bit? Like I know that we've talked for many years about a cashless society and then a local supermarket's uh, didn't w wasn't able to have cash because their safe broke and all of a sudden people went nuts yep. they got more complaints for not being able to do cash sales yep. than for not being able to do FPOS sales when the FPOS is down so that to me says that we still have a pretty strong relationship with cash yeah I think so yeah that's right and I think not everyone actually you know has a credit card and not everyone has you know mm. there's inequalities involved in that as well lucky them <laughs> um, so that's right yeah so systems tend, tend to be entrenched and people don't like those kind of changes um, and but you know, regardless of what the changes are, people are likely to complain about them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the broader picture here, I suppose, is that yeah, definitely like debt. You know, even you think about you now our education systems. You now that our students come to universities and walk out with you know tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt. Mm. Um, we know that um, some of our uh, people, poor potential students are actually making the um, decision not to come to university because of those kind of things. Mm. Um, so, you know, debt here is a, is a real form of inequality and it's also a way of kind of keeping people in, you know, a, a kind of consumer cycle, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And it seems to be those that are in a bad financial situation tend to have more debt. That's right. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a real social pressures to keep up and, and this kind of creates a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy around that. Maybe it'd be nice for the IOU to return. It was it just felt a little bit simpler <laughs> than what we have now. Yeah. I'd love to know what happened in that uh, situation. Yeah. Me too. I need to go back. Um, my tank is nearly empty, so I'm sure I can find out in a couple of days time. Steve, thanks so much for coming in and having a chat. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Dr. Steve Threadgold there, Senior Lecturer in Sociology and Anthropology at the University of Newcastle. If you have an IOU story, I want to hear it. One, three, 333 12 33